Hi everyone! Hi Kerry! Got a few people watching, just when you hop on just say hi, let me know that you're watching. Hi Kat, how are you? Hi Mum. Alright. So we've got a few on, which is good. Happy Friday. Glad it's the end of the week. In one week, then I have a break. Oh, I'm so jealous, Kat. So jealous. I'm thinking I'm going to have to take some time off in um, August or September. I thought I could get through, but I just don't think I can. So, very jealous. So this is the stamp set that we're using tonight. Hi Chrissy. Um, so I'm not um, following my sketch, but my sketch is still uh, available. So this is the sketch that we have up. And so I had the sketch up on, oh he's only just doing it mum to make sure he's being heard. Right now he doesn't actually have a cough. Um, I had this a sketch going until the end of the month so if you want to participate in this this is on my Facebook live uh, Facebook page um, if you need to use 80% stamping up product and create a card that have you have been inspired by this sketch and upload it I've pinned this as a pinned post on my page and hi Karen um, and you post your picture as a comment uh, in there and then you go into the draw for a little prize at the end of the month as well so usually my Facebook lives on a Friday night um, focus around the sketch but given it's the last of the month hi Carrie um, hi Glenda I wasn't I didn't want to focus on the sketch tonight but it is still available and we'll do the draw next week for this month's um, sketch and then on Monday or Tuesday whenever the first is we'll do a new sketch for next month. Um, so anyone can participate in that. Um, the only rule is that you use at least 80% of Stamping Out product for that. All right, so just a reminder about the sketch for that. And then when you pop on, just say hi and leave a comment because then um, just before I go live tonight, uh, each Friday night, my husband does a random generator draw for me and uh, every comment goes into the drawer and this week Glenda Lavender has won. So you've won this paper pack um, of 6x6 six six paper Glenda. So if you um, can PM me your address I can pop that in the post for you Glenda. So congrats for that. And yeah, any comments tonight and sharing will get you in the draw for next week's. Hi Beck. All right. So I wanted to make sure that everyone is aware of our um, joining special as well at the moment with Stamping Up. So what we have uh, in July, and this is Stamping Up's been running this for a couple of years. Every um, order that you place in July of ninety dollars or more gets you a voucher of nine dollars to spend next month um so and then if you spend 180 dollars in july then you'll get 18 dollars worth of vouchers to spend next month and so on so if you spend 270 blah blah blah, you get 27 for next month um so that'll end at the end of this month but what they're running for this month and next month which they've never done before 
is a super, super joining special um, that if you join in July or August, your um, the joining fee is $169. And usually you get $235 worth of pr product of your choice for that. But in July and August, thanks ladies for sharing, uh, in July and August, you get $280 worth of product of your choice. Plus, then you also get $16 of vouchers to work the following month. Um, to use the following month. And then every order after your first order, you get an additional 20% off. So it's pretty special. If you join on the 1st of August, then you also get to order from the new holiday catalogue. Now, I don't even have a holiday catalogue in my hands because I um, can't obtain that in my hands until after the 1st of August and it'll be popped in the post for me then. So I'll probably get it about the 5th, maybe, 5th or 6th. Um, but I can access it online. So demonstrators can access it online now, but we can't order anything until the 1st of August. So if you would like to join and access the Christmas catalogue stuff early and want to join from the 1st of August, you can purchase $280 worth of product of your choice from the Christmas catalogue or the annual catalogue, any choice. Um, you only pay $169, you get free shipping and you'll get $16 worth of vouchers to use then in September. And then any order after that, you get 20% off. So. Just want to put it out there, make sure everybody's aware of the special, um, because really if your wish list is over $169, it does make sense to sign up. But the cards that we're making tonight is using the Very Versilies um, stamp set. When I saw this set in the catalogue, it was on the top of my list, I had to have it. Um, I did receive it about three weeks ago, I think, in the in my order, but I didn't put any ink on it until last week. So what I thought I'd do tonight is do a bit of um, a different stamping. So we've got simple stamping here, which is just inks, paper, and cardstock. And then um, for the casual crafter, and then for the avid crafter. And just step it up a bit without altering the products too much I might take them out of the plastic so you don't have the shine on them is that a bit better? with that um, so still undecided about this one I, I really struggle with the whole vintage thing and I think this is a very vintage set and I struggle with vintage because usually vintage means um, like jagged edges and torn things and that does not work well with my um, little bit of OCD that I have. I need nice clean cuts and things like that. Um, but I think you can still come up with a nice card with this without having to have that messy look that I normally associate with vintage. So we'll start tonight with the simple stamping. So this is, Simple Stamping is designed at beginner crafters that might just only have um, paper and ink. Thanks Marie. So you don't need a lot of supplies to create a card like this. And that's what Simple Stamping is all about. It's just um, stamps, ink and paper. And you don't even have to go with um, the colours that I've used. You can use any colours that you want. But I'm using... love the look of this stamp. Very nice. Thanks, Marie. So this is the one we're using. It is in, it's new in the annual catalogue. Very vers Versalies. And on the same page as this, there is another one with a like perfume bottle, which I think is a bit French looking. And I like that too, and they do pair well together, but I haven't got that one, 
see, this is the other one I was talking about. The Fran Fanciful Frag Fragrance. I can't even say that properly. And that does pair well together, but I like this one a bit better. Out of my two, this is the one that I chose first. So, we'll um, see, and that's what we're working with tonight. So, I've chosen Early Espresso as my card base. Just get my bone folder because my nail technician is getting very cranky at me for using my fingers, my thumb, like that to um, crease my card because apparently I'm doing damage to my thumb, thumbnail. Hi Jane. Hi Deb. <coughs> Who knew my nail technician would know what I did with my fingers? Um, and as you can see, like I make the most out of my card layers. Um, so later on in the cards, we've I've already done some die cutting, so I didn't have to do that tonight. Um, and I just cut it out of the layers because we're covering it up, so you won't see it. That's not that one cover it up and nobody will even know that there's bits missing underneath there so make sure you make the most out of your your card bases so this is um, El Espresso this is Sahara Sand Rococo Rose and then Very Vanilla I thought the white was a bit too stark with this so I went with Very Vanilla and I've lost my sentiment So, and we've just laid a sentiment, which I've just cut out myself, but I've lost where I've put that, so I'll just get my trimmer and cut it out again. So just make sure then you're cutting in the middle of your cardstock, so you don't see, make sure I've got the right layer. just trimmed that out there and that's just a little bit longer we'll just cut a quarter of an inch off that Mick or footy Mick or footy so hard to decide <laughs> thanks James I'm much better entertainment than the footy um, so that's my uh, cutting out of the layer there. And then we'll just do our stamping first in case we stuff it up. So, because there's always two sides to a bit of um, cardstock. So, if you stuff it up, you can turn it over and it won't matter. Nobody will know. Uh, so I've got um, Early Espresso, Sahara Sand and Rococo Rose for the colour, uh, for the inks as well with this. <laughs> and I'm going to stamp first. We need our bigger block for this because the stamp images in this are a bit bigger. So I'm going to stamp first with the script. Now you can't really read what this script says but you can kind of tell if you've done it up the right way or not. So... According to the front of the catalogue, uh, the um, picture, the um, writing finishes in the middle and that's the right way up. So that's how I've been telling. This is the bottom and that's the top. Match my nails. All oh, these nails, they're a little, they, these are more Barbie pink, but they are very close, Deb. I did have, a few weeks ago, I did have Rococo Rose nails and I loved them. They were beautiful. I might go back to them, but... 
Um, so I am using Sahara sand because I want this to be a bit muted. I don't want it to stand out all that much on here. And I'm just going to ink up in one corner and then ink it up again and stamp it in the bottom corner and they will overlap a little bit but not much so I just need to grab a wipe and we'll just clean that off Now the next image is the frame and I've seen a lot of people and I think even in the catalogue I've seen a lot of people um, cut this frame out. So that would be pretty cool but I haven't. So inked it up with Sahara sand and I have overlapped it a little bit to the thing. You keep freezing. That might be your internet mum. Is everybody else, is it freezing for everybody else or just mum? Um, and then so I've stamped the frame on either side as well. Am I good with everybody else? Yeah, it might just be your internet, Mum. Um, and then the... We want in the Rococo Rose this leafy image. Now in the book it and even on the catalog on the cover of the thing it has it hanging down I've stamped it going up the right way so I don't really think it matters it's a leafy image all right so you could have it up either way make sure you've got really good ink coverage on that and then just stamp that in the center because we kind of want this leafy image to be the focal point <coughs> and that's why it's in the different color and then the last image and I just might get a smaller block because I don't want to end up with ink everywhere because I have just had to re-ink my early espresso ink pad because it was a bit lighter than I had liked. So that's why you buy the re-inkers because they're only six fifty, and you usually get about four, four to six refills out of your ink pads for them. So it gives you more life on your ink pad. And you can do other little crafty things with the reinkers as well. So I've just got that. And I did want this littler image to stand out a little bit more, which is why I've done it in Early Espresso. Line that up. And that's your stamping done. For that, we need to stamp the sentiment. Um, so I've got the sentiment and have a beautiful day and I'm going to stamp that in the early espresso as well towards one side and then with the leafy image I have just stamped, so I'll just use the smaller block this time, with the Sahara sand. Just to get a bit of, a bit more on there, a bit more interest. Okay, now... I have got some daubers to 
to um, ink around the edges of all the cardstock layers and this to me kind of gives it the vintage feel as well but a nice clean vintage feel. Just going to ink around that. And ink around this other layer as well, because one of these is going in the inside. And then we'll get the Sahara Sand ones. Oh. I've used Early Espresso um, around the darker, the lighter cardstock. Hi Denise, just to give it a bit more of a depth rather than the Sahara Sand because you don't see it so much with the inking. Has everyone had a good week? And just make sure we do all the layers so that you get a consistent feel, but it does it does actually really make a difference. Just ink up those edges. How was your trip to Newcastle, Karen? And then don't forget to do the sentiment. Glad it's a weekend. Yeah, I think we're all glad it's a weekend, Marie. There's those done. And then we just need to stamp the inside as well. So while I've got the ink out, we'll stamp the inside. It's got the sentiment of the um, cold and I injured my knee. Oh no, Carrie. What did you do? Back from Adelaide, it's warmer here. Yeah, much warmer here, isn't it? So I've just stamped the um, the scripty image on its side just to give it a bit more. I wasn't even drinking. Sure. Stepped off the bus. Oh no way. Um, and then I've just got the El Espresso for this little fancy type image. That's what they all say. <laughs> and then again, just with the um, Rococo Rose in the center of that. So now we just need to put this card together because it's pretty much done. need to get my tape in heels many lessons there yeah see flat shoes carry flat shoes well 
I got to, still not a fan of that rose colour, I love it. I got to check out my new building this week that I'm going to be moving into for work, which is a little bit exciting. So there's the inside. So much flash than 260 Carrie Ann. You're missing out. It was a bit annoying that we got to be there all morning and then had to go back to 260 and sit there and work then because then you realize that we are really slumming it but um, considering I was on level 19 as well and half the lights on the floor aren't working so I've ended up with a massive headache and so that's why I'm not showing my face tonight because I had that yesterday and I've had it all day today so that's not really helping but um the new building, it, it's all freshly new. It smells like paint. The boardroom type thing smells like um, new car because the new carpet and the leather chairs that are in it. And you're like, oh, beautiful views. So I don't know how much work's actually going to get done when we're there because we can just be looking at the bridge all day. But, um, yeah, considering now we've got no view at more. You lost me at level 19. <laughs> well, in the new building, I'm only level 12, Deb, so it's all right. Especially if there's a bloody fire alarm. But it is a bit flash, but our building passes were supposed to work and um, mine didn't. And it wouldn't open the toilets because the toilets are all secured. So we had to ask the workmen to let us into the toilets, which was a bit embarrassing, but anyway, they're okay with it. Hopefully that'll work in a few weeks when we're there. But we've caught up to Sydney and Melbourne now. Now we have Wi-Fi in the building when we move. And we've got video conferencing in nearly every room, bookable room, which well, is a nice treat for us because currently we only have like one one room and it's always booked. Oh, we had to have secure toilets, um, Deb, because we had a bit of an incident with some randoms coming and using our toilets. So a bit of a security breach. Long story, I'll tell you one day. And we're just popping this up with dimensionals. I'm not joking, Deb. We used to have fun... <laughs> not forgetting the toilet. <laughs> Um, we used to have homeless people that would come in because the in 260 the female toilets are outside the security doors and the male toilets are inside and so we used to have homeless people come in and use the female toilets but then there was another incident and so now all the toilets are secure so at this new building our toilets are going to be secure from day one and that's my simple stamping card which is just ink and cardstock now, it is a few layers of cardstock, but it is still just cardstock. So you don't need a lot of supplies. And as you saw, like this pink layer underneath the Rococo Rose, um, I cut all my things out for my next card out of the base layer of that. So they're only really, like I make the most of my papers. So I hope you like that one. And you can tell the difference after I've re-inked my Earl Espresso, can't you? because I didn't like how that was turning out, but I re-inked it and she's all good now. Haha, uh -huh, key to pee. <laughs> yes, and if you forget it, then it's a bit of a struggle.
So then our next card is designed for the casual crafter. So this one is based on just punches and two little embellishments, which is just this um, called, they're called um, designer elements in the catalog and they're pretty cool and a tiny bit of ribbon and all the rest is just punches. So very similar design. So we'll make that one next. Thanks ladies. Now I have done some of my die cutting again to help. And this one to get the flower I've had to just bring in um, floral essence so that we can stamp that and then punch that out. So I have had to bring in an extra stamp set but that's okay. So we'll stamp that first. We're going to stamp the perennial, uh, the flower, whatever that flower is called, and some leaves. But we're going to do it out of the layer of cardstock, so we're not going to waste anything. And when you've got things that are matching up with punches, so both these match up with punches would be nice if the punches were easier to use. It is a bit hard with arthritis, Denise, but they do they do, do work. You might be able to use them a bit on, um, by pushing them on the bench, um, using them that way. But yes, they are a bit of a struggle to use. So when you're stamping images and trying to line it up with the punch so that you don't have to end up cutting cardstock, especially when you're trying to do it out of the bottom layer of your card so that you're trying not to waste card. Make sure you um, work out how it uh, fits into the punch. So when you stamp, you want to make sure that you're stamping the right way. So I've got two petals on the bottom, one petal on the top, so that when I stamp, I can line this up and go straight in like this and I'm not going to have to be turning punches and things like that. Same with the leaves because I'll stamp the leaves on the other side and they go in this way so I want the um, the leaves up the top and the stem down the bottom okay so just making sure that you take note of that so we're just stamping in Sahara sand on Sahara sand as well so it's tone on tone stamping we just want two flowers so you want them far enough in to not um, see on the border but you also want them not too far in that the punch can still get them so just clean that and then with the leaf image so this floral essence comes in a bundle and the bundle is the flower and the stamp set but this leaf punch is sold separately in the catalog and it carried over from last year and it fits perfectly which is great so you just line it up and our punches are designed to use upside down so that you're putting the image in lining it up and then Punching that down and it punches out. Okay, and then do that one. And now we'll do the petals. Oh, that nearly landed in the ink. All right, so then that's done and nobody will see that we got that out of that paper. Because we're going to cover that over. 
Um, so I have inked these around as well and I've inked them with the darker early espresso. So has everyone seen the catalogue, the new holiday catalogue? Those of you that are demonstrators online. When you're inking the leaves just be careful because these stems are quite thin, you can't be as rough as I normally am um, with them because you will bend your leaves. Love the new kind of, yeah. Me too. I like the stars. So I've just inked around those. So we'll ink around the cardstock while I'm inking here. Now the cardstock you can be obviously a little bit rougher with. It's a bit sturdier. Is it me or is there a lot of stamps you can colour in the whole? I think there's an awful lot of stamps that you can colour. Carry in, get those blends out. I've downloaded it, but I only had a quick look. That's tomorrow. Oh, nice. I can't wait till I get it in my hands because I find things like when I'm looking at it online, I like things. And then when I actually get it in person, then I find I like other things and I find other things that I missed in the catalog. So I do need to make sure I put an order in to get the real catalog in my hands as quickly as possible. Seems to be the trend, yes. And for those of the, us that are lacking colouring skills, it's a bit frustrating, but it gives us an opportunity to get better at our colouring skills. Then I'm just doing this one with the Rococo Rose. I've cut so much out of the center of this I can't go as it's not as sturdy as it a full piece normally is Okay, did I do the top? Yep. And then one more. And then we need to do some more stamping. Sentiment, sorry. Ink around the sentiment. Okay. So we need to stamp on this one and we'll get the inside piece as well. So we might stamp on the inside piece first. So I've done all the inside pieces the same 
um, using the scripty stamp just on an angle in the corner. Doing the leafy image with the Rococo Rose. And this border fancy looking image in early espresso. So that's the inside done. And then all the other stamping is the same on these cards as well. So we'll get the big block back out. I might have to rink my Sahara sand as well. Stamp that one. And that one. Get the frame image. And Rococo Rose for the leaf image. And this is a distinctive stamp, so it um, you're not going to get clear, crisp images on it. Um, and that's the way it's designed. So you can really notice it with the Rococo Rose. Hey, you've got the dark and the light. That's not because I stuffed up stamping. That's the way the stamp is. It's distinctive. So it's to give you that um, different tones um, in your image. That's how it's designed. In that. And then we'll do this fence looking piece on the bottom and the top so that's the stamping done now with the um, sentiment I've got my scissors I've just oh I need to stamp the sentiment first um, with this ribbon I've just cut it in half because I'm just wanting the Rococo Rose scallop there I don't really want the other stuff but I want something to stick to the back of it so I'm just cutting it in half rather than cutting the scallop off And then we'll just stamp the sentiment as well. And we did that in early espresso. This time I've stamped it in the middle. It is pretty ribbon, uh, Marie. They've got this in every colour of the... Um, the new in colors um, and I've stamped the leafy image on either side of this although you can't see on one bit because I have covered it over but we'll do it so it comes in the seaside spray the terracotta tile pretty peacock um, purple posy and the Rococo Rose so we're just going to stick some tape on the back of that. 
Um, it's not the nicest ribbon to tie a bow. It's very bulky to tie a bow, but it is really nice just to use flat. Because um, it's quite a, um, a stiff ribbon as well with the scallop and the linen um, in it. So it, it doesn't tie bows the greatest. I've seen some people do it, but I've tried every trick that I know and I cannot get a nice bow with it. So I'm just lining this up so that you just see the scallop edge on that. And we'll do the same on this side. And then we'll just trim off the excess. And just put that over there until we're ready. Now we'll layer all these together. Bless me. Make sure we've got the right layers with the right bits. Oops. Put that for the inside. use my bone folder to crease this over and again this is just Earl Espresso so when you're using the darker card France you will need to put something on the inside so that you can write in the cards and then layer this one So all the details for this card will be on my blog tomorrow. My blog is at vixcraftycreations.com And then if you um, go there you can also sign up for my newsletter which you'll get once a month which will have details of my classes and any specials at Stamping Up or myself are running on that. So then we'll just get some dimensionals and we'll put the sentiment on first. Oh, I've got too many dimensionals. Because it's easier if you put the sentiment on first because everyone wants to see the sentiment and then you can kind of position the flowers around that once this is on. And so I've kind of put that there so it lines up, it covers a bit of that dead space that was there. Oh, I didn't punch out the pink. 
lay a bit. Oh, good thing we've got another card. This one won't have pink layers because I didn't cut punch them out. That's alright. We can see what it looks like without them. Because the other cards I've already punched them out. Or did I put them in? So I've also punched out um, two of the leaves just in the vellum as well, just to break it up a bit. So we need to layer these with just the glue dots. So just get a mini glue dot. And layer that and off center it and then once they're done what I've just done is use my bone folder and just creased up those petals just a little bit just to give it a bit of dimension you don't want to crease too much because otherwise they'll rip off because they are only cardstock just to give it a bit stick the leaves behind there and then these are at my whole thing. These are the designer elements. So they come in gold, silver and the copper or the bronzy colour. So I might use a gold one and they're already got glue dots on them. So you just get your little pokey tool. Stick it on. Done. Alright, so we'll have a dimensional on the back of that and pop him down. And then we just get glue dots and pop these leaves in wherever they kind of fit. You just want to make sure that when you're putting these in that they go far enough in that you don't have too much poking out the bottom of the card otherwise they're going to get destroyed in the envelope as well. We want that underneath that petal. Push that in under there. Otherwise all your hard work is going to get destroyed anyway. And there's that one without the pink layer underneath. But that's all right. A little bit different. Okay, so then this is the really stepped up version. This is for Avid Crafters and this involves die cutting. So you need to make sure you've got a die cutting machine. And I've also embossed at the background, which you might not be able to see. Hi, Sue. Um, I've embossed the background with the Subtles embossing folder. Now, I've done that after I've um, stamped everything. You can't really see it but on the camera, but you can see it in person. So this is the one we're going to do next. So we'll get all the pieces out for this. All 
All right. So with this one, you'll also notice I've used the um, woven heirlooms embossing and die cutting fold frames that you get in that set as well. And then some other um, die cuts I've used are from the flowering flourishes set. So this is the set. It doesn't come in a bundle anymore, but this is, they're just called flourishes is the dies. So they're the set of dies that I've used for these. So they're still available. You can purchase them. They are a bit intricate to use, but they're pretty cool. So I have done a lot of the die cutting and everything, so you don't have to sit here and watch the die cutting, and we just put a lot of it together, but... You can watch how I've done that. So if we fold this base with our bone folder... My nail tech will be so pleased with me tonight using my bone folder and not my finger. Or not my thumbnail. Alright, um, so... As you can see, I've used this base layer to cut a lot of the flourishes out as well. And is that the one? And that will layer on there. And we'll stamp on that. And then for the middle layer, I've taken the frame out of there. Alright, so then we can just layer that once we've stamped. So we stamp these two. Just put them away for a bit. Stamp on these two. So we'll stamp the inside so we'll get that done. And that's a bit smudgy on that side, so we'll stamp this side. There's always two sides to a bit of paper. Um, so just the scripty image. I'm just stamping that in the corner on an angle. The fancy type image with the early espresso on the bottom here. And then the leafy image in the Rococo Rose on an angle there. Okay, so that's the inside done. Nice and easy. So because there's so many pieces with this one, we might make the inside bit so it disappears. And you'll also notice I've already um, inked the outsides of these as well to make it a bit quicker because you've already watched me do that on two cards. I didn't think you need to watch me do it on three. Um, I'll stick that one on the inside. Sure, we stick that the right way. Okay, so that's the inside done. Now we'll layer these two pieces together and stick them down to get them out of the way as well. Does anybody else do this with their card layers? Like cut all the stuff out of the middle so we're not wasting any cardstock? I didn't ink around the edge for this one.
Now, I never used to dip because I'm like, oh, really? But it does make it much more cost effective. And especially when you're using stuff like um, glimmer paper or the foil paper, because it is, that's a little bit more expensive than just normal card stuff. So, nice. Everyone's doing it. Well, we pay a lot of money for our craft stuff. We want to make the most out of it. We want to get the most out of everything we use. And when you're covering it over, nobody sees it anyway, so... They'll only know if they saw me make this video. I have started doing it in my classes now too, Deb, because I was just finding it was just getting too, because um, I was using a lot of die cuts and punches and stuff, it was getting very um, cardstock heavy without me doing it, and I'm like, well, we're only covering it over anyway, so. So I put that away now while we stamp on this a piece and we'll need that big um, a scripty image so I've got my big block out again I'm trying to line this up straight Sahara sand ink onto the Sahara sand cardstock and then do that again Then we've got the frame. Now this time I am covering up a lot of this. So you probably don't need to stamp as much as I have on this one. But I thought I stamped first um, and then did all the die cutting and everything afterwards and worked out whether I put that much on or not. So I'm going to tilt that a bit to that side. And... sentiment again I thought I cut them all out I think I must have packed them up in my scraps I'll just get that out Um, and then we need the fancy looking image with the early espresso. And we'll just stamp the sentiment which I just need to cut again. Oh, and I had it in... Well, it won't be framed in pink this time because I don't know where that went. Anyway, we'll ink that in pink. Oh, stamp that upside down. Lucky. That's okay. And then I've just done this in the early espresso, this leaf image this time, just to give it a bit more contrast.
Okay, and then we'll just have to ink around the edge of the sentiment. That bit's done. So, then I will, I think we're going to close up these ink pads because I think we've inked everything now. And we're going to bring in, exactly, yes, um, we're going to bring in the big shot and do the subtle embossing folder. So I'm just going to pop that over there so I don't ruin any of my die cuts that I've already done. Now I want the razor on this side. So when you've already inked it is a bit different to the way that you normally use your cardstock because usually it doesn't kind of matter which way. But I want the raised bits on my inking so I'm gonna put it in the folder that way over my big shot and because this is the old um, Suttles embossing folder it doesn't work with the new plate so I need to take my two mats out and just have the one acrylic plate put my sandwich in and sandwich this three and then we'll put this back together and put it away because it takes up a lot of room and there you can see. So I don't know whether you can tell the difference, but now it looks a bit like textured cardstock. But textured cardstock is a bit of a pain to um, stamp on because you never get a clean image. So if you do this after you've stamped, you have a clean image and then still the textured cardstock feel. Okay, so I have lots of die cut pieces here and I'm not sure I'll use them all. Oh, look, there's my sentiment there. I've just cut another piece. So we will have to be able to layer on the pink. Good job. Okay, so we're going to layer that on the pink. Where did my tape go? There. There we go. Now we're going to stick this on the card first. Now when I emboss a piece, I um, make sure I use tape on all four sides because it's a bit more textured and you don't want it lifting or anything, but normally I just use two, two bits of tape. Layer that on. So we've also got this frame. So I'm going to dimensional that frame. But 
we're not going to stick that down yet. Not whether I want that. Because I've got this, so this comes part of that other set. So I've only really used the two sets here, the, ver the very Versalies, and then I've used the die cuts from the Flourish set. I want to stick that under there, I think. So I need to stick that there first, have that on an angle. And then I've got this really cool ribbon. So this ribbon is from the um, the Woven Heirlooms um, suite as well. And it comes, I'm just trimming off some straggly bits here, but it comes with um, the tassels on it, but it, they're tied, but you can pull this thread here and it comes out really easy and then your tassels are free as well. That's pretty cool. So I'm going to stick that on the bottom of the frame as well. So we're going to stick some tape on there to hold that in. I might just move these dimensionals just if they're going to come up. Move them up a bit. So we can stick some tape down there. And then put the tassels down. And then I've just trimmed off the excess bit. Trim those. And we'll just put some tape on this one. Now you're going to be able to see it underneath, but a lot of it I've covered up, so I don't I'm not really too concerned about it. And I'd rather tape than sit there and play with wet glue. Wet glue and I are not friends. Okay, so now I'm going to stick the frame down. Just taking the dimensionals off. I want that on a bit of an angle. Then I'm going to stick the sentiment down on dimensionals as well. And then we can add everything else in. Because you want to see the frame and you want to see the dimensionals and then you kind of just add everything else in that you want to fill up. So I'm going to stick that across there. Straight. And then I really like these flower bits, so I'm definitely going to have them. And I've just layered them. Off center. There, so we'll just have glue dots sticking them together. Okay, 
And then I've got one of those perennial, what are these called? Designer elements. I think I'm going to use the copper one this time. Stick in the centre of that. Oh, look at that. And that's stuck to that now. Anyway. Oh, I like that. So we've got that down there. Now I've done some stuff in Rococo Rose. I've done the Flourish and the Leaf. I've done it in the Sahara Sand. And then I've also done it in Vellum as well. And then I've got some leftover leaf bits in Vellum too. Now the vellum is really painful because it's, even though it's quite thick vellum, it's really painful to try and get out of the dies. So they're not full dies. I have ripped a flower off one or two of them trying to do it. But we will put this down. So I think we might do the... Vellum first, then the Sahara sand, and then the uh, Rococo rose. So I've just stuck these with glue dots, really. Because they're quite thin, and with a few layers and stuff, you don't want too much dimension. Either. Ugh. So they're on there. We'll stick the flower down with a dimensional because we're going to stick the leaves underneath that. And stick them down with glue dots. So I have one out here. One out here. And the vellum one is a bit destroyed. there and then have that go there and then I finished it off with a vintage scallop lace bow down here So we'll get rid of that and all of this mess and show you the three cards that we made tonight. So let's bring them all back in then. This is for the Avid Crafter. This is for the Casual Crafter. And this is for the Beginner Crafter. And then these were what we, the originals that I had made. And they have turned out slightly different. But that's what card making is all about. No one knows what the original was. So, how do we like that? I did struggle a little bit with the simple stamping. And I kind of started with this card first. I think personally this is where I sit a lot of the time. Even though I'm an avid crafter, I think this is a lot of time and 
when I sit down to craft I don't have a lot of time I have limited time and I want to get good bang for my buck so I think I sit in this um, space because you can make multiple cards of this really quickly without too time consuming this is really nice for like a special occasion or something like that but I can't make multiple cards of that it's it is quite time consuming and this is a struggle for me but it's easy with this set so tonight we've used the very versely's we'll just pack this up so that we can see the stamp set So we've used that stamp set. We used the dies from that for the Avid. And then we did um, for the Casual, we did use a bit of the um, stamps from this set because they matched the punches. And then a couple of embellishments. So hopefully you enjoyed that tonight and showed you the versatility of the stamp sets as well as um, the products. And you can get a really stunning card with very simple designs. So you could definitely replicate this at home with just that stamp set and you can just choose whatever colours you like. I did layer a number of colours here. Um, but you don't have to layer it again. You could just go straight with the El Espresso and the Rococo Rose with the Sahara Sand. You don't have to have that separate layer of Sahara Sand there, but I liked that, so that's what I went with. But, um, yes. So hopefully you like those and it inspires you to do something a bit different or try that simple stamping because it is... Once you've been crafting for a while, I think we all get into a habit of um, just doing what we're used to or what we think looks better which often I find from my personal experience is this um, is the casual crafters type things and we're always trying to make sure that we've got enough technique or design or whatever in our cards that people are going to like them but simple stamping can be very effective as well um, so if you haven't already um, signed up for my newsletter, so go over to my website and have a look there and you can sign up for my news, uh, um, newsletter which will have detail on classes and any um, upcoming specials or any events on there. The, I'm also on YouTube as well. I'll transfer this video over to YouTube um, later in the week. And then the card sketch challenge as well. So if you want to enter in... To that you've got a couple of days until the end of the month so if you want to do something over the weekend create a card with this challenge and use 80% stamping up product and then upload the picture to my Facebook page underneath this pinned post and you can go in the drawer to win a prize for that next month um, but thank you everybody for joining in tonight and I hope you have a wonderful weekend of crafting and I'll see you all next week bye